Hey folks, did a bit of cleaning in here. We got that all going. Dogs are resting. <laughs> we got a little bit of a, well, not so much a snowstorm, but we got a lot of, we got some more snow. So we got that going, it's blowing, it's pretty chilly. Pretty happy to be in here, so. Anyways, I think the plan is gonna be, I'm gonna cover up the back here a little bit. I just want to splash a bit of paint on the back so I can mount this box and forget about it and not touch it again. Uh, the paint is not really the color I want to paint the truck, but it's like a variant of it. It's basically that same green that I painted up the hoist, so I'm going to shoot a little bit of that. I believe what I want to do for the truck is going to be like olive drab, or not olive drab. Um, it's, I don't know, it's sort of like a mint green or something like that, I'm thinking. I think the contrast with the white top and stuff, that would look pretty cool together. Um, I guess that's the first step where I'm going to go. I don't know really what else I'm going to do, but we can at least start with that. Because if I paint it, I have to wait. So I'm going to do that right away. And uh, then I guess we can come back later and uh, put the box back on once that dries up a little. Sound like a plan? Hmm? <laughs> So last night we didn't get a whole lot done. That's a friend stopped by, we just kind of hung out, did our thing. I did manage to get the box on. Uh, today I picked up some hardware, so we got some flush carriage bolts for that section, because the other ones, the, the nuts are countersunk, so that's not too big of a problem. I think I can dust a little bit of paint on top of here, just for now. Uh, we're gonna get the compressors bolted in. I'm going to get the air tank in there I think what I want to do is sort of try to dry run and get uh, my air ride kind of situated, if that's the right way to say it. We got our rear bags. Uh, the lower mount's going to work. I made some upper pads. I just got to get that sleeve tube yet. Uh, just waiting for some of that to come in. Uh, what else we got going on here? Uh, my air management is similar to what Carl did. Mine's quarter inch. Um, this is like an AccuAir knockoff I found on Amazon. Really cheap. Had a goofy remote for the air management thing. I'm not using any of that. It's uh, for my air gauge. I have one of these digital dealios. You actually can find them on Amazon with these units nowadays. That said, compared to AccuAir, this is really, really cheap, but it's only quarter inch lines on here. I think it cost me like 150 bucks for that thing. And then... I don't remember what this was, if it was $100 or something. I know I talked about it a long time ago. Essentially what this is, because the gauges are usually pretty spendy. What this one will do is it'll show my tank pressure and then all four corners in one single gauge. So I'm trying to figure out where to put this. I might try to retrofit it into the middle of the dash. 
where the Pontiac emblem was. So I'm going to see if I can figure some way to do that kind of hidden ish into there. Uh, this one at least had a wiring diagram compared to Carl's. Uh, so the way the manifold works, is you'll have all your pressure gauges for each wheel here. And then these are the flows out. This I'm hoping will work right to read the tank pressure. And then this is going to be my airline feed in from the air tank. And then I want to just get some uh, fittings for here because when it dumps, it'll just blow behind the seat. So that's the thing I want to do with this is actually wire it. So it is, um, we're going to put it behind the seat. So what I got to do now is build a little bracket that will hold this thing here nicely. And then uh, it'll just be easy to plumb down to where my tank's going to be just below. That's my thought. Uh, ba -ba -ba. So anyways, we'll do that, and then hopefully I got enough airline, we'll kind of run the airline around. I bought a universal kit just for doing all the, the plumbing, but for what I needed, it's kind of, it's okay. It might be nice if we go on a trip just to have a couple little union things or something in case, you know, we have a problem with a line or something, but anyways, I kind of did this so I have a rough idea of stuff to buy, and then I just have an inventory. That was my thought. Right, pup? You don't care, okay? You just want to hang out. <laughs> All right, well, let's start by sparking up the plasma table and we're gonna make that bracket and then uh, we'll try to start plumbing all this stuff. All right, folks, I haven't really filmed because it's kind of hard to film in here. Anyways, I've been working on the bags, plumbing the right lines. It's kind of what I've been doing. So you can see the bag is in here. It's sitting on a mount. I'll kind of show you on the other side, but uh, you have to kind of hodge. Uh, maybe I'll just go to the other side and show you there. <clears throat> Anyways, my studs were not long enough to go through. Um, I was noticing these, they were sitting in there, but they weren't sitting in the pocket right. So if you look under here, you can see a, that's the spring pocket where the original spring went into. And on a bag mount, you kind of have a lower. So the lower spring goes there, but you have this little hat that fits into this place. And then your bag would bolt onto that. And then the upper, this is supposed to go through where the shock would go. I don't know if you can see right there, like that little hole. This one, it doesn't quite go through it. So what I got to do is cut these and just extending them. And uh, I'm just running like my air lines. I'm gonna run it through the cross member. I'm gonna try to go through the frame as much as possible. That way there's no way anything can interfere or, you know, hit the line. Here it's not too bad. My exhaust is gonna go over. I had it coming out of the frame before, but I'm gonna come out. There's a little spot where the fuel lines go. I'm gonna do that and then I can run it on the inside of the frame back. And then we can kind of piggyback into the cab. So. All corners are going to do something like that, and then they're all going to come up out of the floor over here. That's the plan, anyways. Uh, yeah. It's fun. <laughs> see, this thing's weird because you can see where the pin is, but as you spin it, it orients wrong. So these lines end up, they're actually pointing into this cross member, which is fine. I'm just making sure to clearance everything that there's no lines going. So it is all hard to show. You can see how much of the spring pockets just cut out. It's just to make clearance so the bag can't touch anywhere. I think it just had bigger bags originally in it, but uh, these seem to work fine. The ones I bought are actually way smaller. Uh, they must be like, they go by 2,500, so it's like 2,500 pounds, I think it is a bag or however that goes. So these back ones are 2,600, so you can see how much bigger they are to this. 
but what I don't understand is these are 2,500, but they're just, they're, they're, they're way smaller in diameter. So I don't know that I want to run those in the front. <laughs> I think I've run these on stuff before, but it's going to take like a lot of air. So I guess these are for like a truck or something. So eh, maybe I'll repurpose these and we'll put them on the uh, general because they're kind of small to use anything else. So, okay. So back to what I was doing, cut this off. I'm going to weld the stud, run some lines and then, uh, then we'll go back to the, we'll actually go to the plasma table and cut out that airbag mount. My goal is to get everything mounted in there and be able to like, dry hit switches or I'll just put that goofy remote in for now and we'll just see that it can lift and do its thing and uh, then when we get to the wiring stage at least that part's kind of all done. All right pup, sound like a plan? Hmm? Did your splits in your eyes?
Okay, so what have we all done? We, well, I got, we used this thing and cooked the beans out of this thing. So these are our mounts for the uh, rear bag mounts for the uppers. So these are gonna sit down here. This fitting is actually gonna spin through the other way and then the airline will come out that backside. So that's the plan. We're gonna go test fit this in the truck. What did I do here? I, we got the tank mounted, compressors all bolted down. We got our relays in. We're just about ready well, to fire. This is our switch. I put in a half inch line on there so I can put a remote, um, like a fill at some point and a, a place where I can put like an air chuck to fill tires and things like that. Up in the front here is gonna be our valve to fill the inside of the truck. We ran our air lines, they come out through here. I'm probably gonna rubber sleeve these yet just so they can't rub on anything. We have one of these little rubber doodads here. From here we're gonna fasten, run around. I gotta get some grommets, so I gotta punch a couple holes. We're gonna run all these in there, and then when we do the rear bags, uh, I gotta flow the lines over to this side too, and they're all gonna go up into the cab. And then we'll show you what we did inside. But the, you can see that I got the mount there. And then you put some sound deadening behind it. So this thing's mounted. We got all our switches, everything all on top. So we're almost there. Uh, next thing to do is I'm just gonna bolt these bags together and we're gonna smash them in the back and see how it goes through a cycle and uh, where they look the best. And then we'll kind of blitz the uppers in and blitz the bottoms in. And then I guess all our bags are mounted. We just gotta finish up the plumbing.
Well, it's up on, it's half new bags. <laughs> Anyways, we got the back on the front. I kind of reuse the front lines in the back. Shouldn't be an issue. I just have them teed. We'll see what happens in the morning. I had an aggressive leak just all of a sudden happening out of the front here. And I don't know, I keep reseeding the line. I guess this fitting just went, gave the ghost. She's no good. So put a new fitting in there. So far, so good. I don't have anything plumbed into the air management stuff yet, nor do I have power to anything. So uh, like I said, tomorrow I got to get a few things. I'm going to see if I can get at some of the, the truck shops there. I want to see if I can get the fit to this chuck, if I can find a, a half inch line to go to it. And then I need some 3 8 line to uh, uh, run from the tank into that little module thing. The uh, air management, the solenoid pack. Then at least I want to put some power, 12 volt power to everything and just see if things, you know, see if it works the way it should. Would be nice. Anyways, that is tomorrow's plan. We're just slowly plugging away, but some of the mechanical, I guess, is what my, my overall plan so far is. But uh, slowly but surely, we're getting there.
we got a whole lot done. Uh, so, uh, what did we all really do here? Uh, we got, I ran all the airlines, the air management. We got our lines up into the bags. They're all good. We kind of tidied up a little bit into here. So our lines are all run. They're scooting under here. I still have to do the fresh air deal. Uh, but at least this is in. We have a sample of how our gauges all work here. So you can see, I don't know if you can or not, but uh, this thing shows my tank pressure up top. And then the other ones will show all of my, let's see if we can. So it'll do like my fronts and which ones are my rears here? We'll just try to. So there you go. So this will show my pressures. All front, left, right, left, yada, yada, yada. So the mod, whatever you want to call this thing, the solenoid pack is there. I had a little leak on one of them. I ended up changing an O ring. Basically, this is your solenoids. If you undo all these bolts, this thing actually can come off. And then there's like studs that actually have like valves in there. So one of the O-rings was bad on there and was leaking. I think I got everything of that nature sorted out. So now we have this plum. These are all in the right order. Uh, like I say, uh, I think my big plan is this was the piece that was sitting up into here. So I might try to retrofit this thing to fit inside of there or make a new insert. I'm not sure. And that way we can kind of have that sitting in there. I'm just going to do toggle switches, so I'll probably put those under the dash or somewhere. I don't know yet as far as the uh, air ride side of it goes. But uh, hey, made some pretty good progress. We got our uh, pretty much have the air ride going. Like once we get more to the electrical side, it's all good, but we're one step further here. Um, next round, uh, I wouldn't mind getting the motor out of my donor, it would be pretty nice. I do have to try to get the steering sorted out and then bump up another one to see how to do the shifter, but we'll kind of get our motor and stuff. We can set that up and in, like get that as a done deal. And then uh, I guess one of the next big hurdles is going to be this, this running board step that I have to do that door notch into it, kind of hit that. And then, I don't know, kind of be all over the place. <laughs> There's still quite a bit of things to do, but. Hey, this is, uh, this is about where we're at.
So over to this side we have, what did we all get done on here? Uh, Rolly was kind of plugging away doing his thing. We got the, he had cut some brackets or cut some spacers. So basically we have our center part of the frame is squared. We have it just zapped. We first welded them on, squared it to the table and to the back diff. Then we tacked it down because we're going to retackle and redo these front horns and we're going to redo the back kick uh, just to go with the link bars, fix that all up. Uh, he pulled, we cut all the perches, everything all off, all the stuff we don't need. We pulled the wheels apart just to see what we need for brakes and stuff like that. Uh, if we need anything, stuff looks pretty good. We've ordered some parts, some kingpins and things like that to get stuff in the front. Uh, he's picked up a spring. We'll probably at some point reverse the eye on this thing just to get everything lower. And uh, what did he else he get? He got some, a set of bones. We'll have to plug them and do our thing there, but we'll be able to slowly start mocking up the front end. I think we can do the horns and figure that out. We'll stick the uh, grill shell in and get that squared up and stuff. It's been pulled and tweaked so many times. One of the rails look like it's like this. And so we're going to cut the front off and kind of start from scratch. Uh, this is one of the axles I had dropped. I don't know how long ago, but it was pretty worn. There was actually some wear marks from the spring. I guess it had some bad bushings. So just kind of welded them up a little bit, filled it just to make it look a little prettier. But uh, that's about where we are with the update on this thing. So anyways, I think that is about where we are going to leave this one. Um, like I say, we got, we got a plan for the next round, I think. I think maybe we'll get the motor in and start pulling that or we'll just start doing more metal work. I don't know. There's a, we'll toss a coin and figure that part out. But anyways, folks, as always, I want to thank you all for watching and we will catch you on the next one. Later.